What? Over to say, yeah, guys, I just trolled the shit out of y'all. No one really thinks I bench over 600 pounds. No one thinks I squat 800, 900 pounds. Come on, it was just trolling, guys. Obviously, if I really lifted those weights, I'd just go to a powerlifting meet, right? That is, you guys got trolled. I was having fun. It's kind of weird. I get accused of having a big ego oftentimes, but I really, really am, am a lot more down to earth than people make me out to be on the internet. Um, I'm still saying to this day, I didn't threaten his family. I'm going to be honest. If I had intended to harm his family in any way, number one, I wouldn't have warned him first. Number two, uh, they wouldn't be here. Uh, let's just be frank. Let's be honest here. Look at what all I do for hobbies. I have no ill will towards this man's family. I have no ill will towards his child. Survey. 78% of women think a dad bod is a sign that a guy is comfortable in his own skin. All right, number two, 47% of women agree that the dad bod is the new six pack. So a little extra padding is in style right now. Number three, 80% of women said they'd be proud to be married to a guy with a dad bod. Number four, 92% of married women with a dad bod Married men with a dad bod said they're happy with their marriage. 86% are happy with their life in general. And only 61% Some people do it for their ego or philosophical reasons, but you know what? I used to hunt dangerous game on foot um, for philosophical reasons. But most of you would say that's really fucking stupid, Jason. Um, you're a fucking idiot. Uh, but yeah, I did that with some of my family and everything. Hunting wild boar with knives on foot and anyone who's familiar with the feral hogs in Texas understands that that is a dangerous animal that animal can kill you it can definitely put 50 or 60 stitches in you uh, with those tusks some of them get up over 200 pounds we hunt them on foot with a knife and they are aggressive like I'd love to get up and go hunt mountain lions again uh, up in Colorado or something later on to uh, see if I could get a draw on one of the licenses. I'd love to do that. I'd do that in a heartbeat. Absolutely. So, yes, if we cloned these dinosaurs, I would say to all these civilized leftist social justice warriors, yes, I would go and hunt one. And do you know why? Because that is a big, dangerous, rare animal. It's not going to be a limited resource if we started making them anyways. And to go out there and prove that I am fit to lead. And I would definitely go hunt a Velociraptor or a T-Rex. Might need a really big gun for that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. On foot. So, uh, I, but I came to terms with the fact that I am a hunter, that I'm a killer, and I'm okay with that. I want to interact with others. Uh, when I'm at a gym, I am that person. I'm a social butterfly. I talk to people. I talk to people. I will talk to random strangers. I talk to other lifters. I will talk to the girls behind the desk. That is what I do. And there are people who are like it. A lot of people like that. I'm a social butterfly at a gym. And so for me, um, I have personally been hit by a dumbbell that bounced across the floor when someone did this before. I thought I was in the safe area and it bounced over and hit me right after I got done doing some 500 pound deadlift rep work. Uh, needless to say, I went over and ripped the guy's ass a new one. Um, I was pretty hard on him and he didn't really know what to say other than apologize. Um, and then, you know, of course, people were kind of laughing at him afterwards. But, yeah, I went at him pretty hard because uh, he hit me with his fucking dumbbell. And, you know, you got to think about that. They're realized how violent they will become. That's normal human nature. And anyone who doesn't understand that, you clearly haven't experienced much in life. You don't have very much social interaction off the computer if you don't understand that. So I got to wonder sometimes <laughs> about people's uh, grasp of reality. You got people clearly have not been around very much. I've been around the world. You guys know that because I've shot videos in more than one country. But I'll just tell you straight up. Um, <laughs> anyone approaches my girl and hits on them, they might disappear. I'm just going to leave it out, leave that out there. I don't know what happened to you. You have to be pissed. And there might be consequences if you were to bump into them in person. I know there's some other YouTubers who've talked about my girl. There would be consequences if I bumped into them in person. All right, no doubt about that. Uh, not necessarily what people would expect either. 
But I crap into all his fans coming here like, oh, you're fat. You need to go on a ketogenic diet. No, guys, I don't want to die. No, thank you. I'm 40 years old. Heart disease runs in my family. I'm not stupid enough to do a ketogenic diet. I know you guys would love for me to do that because you want me to die. I'm not going to do it. Sorry, guys. Sorry to his fans. Uh, I think you are trying to kill me. See, because the difference is I read science. So let's get over to the point. All these YouTubers offer this online coaching and people pay for it. I'm sorry, guys, but if you're paying money because of someone's star power alone who doesn't seem to possess a lot of knowledge, maybe they're where they are purely due to drugs or drugs with genetics, and they probably don't know a lot, the fact that you're going to pay them for private coaching because there's a YouTuber, instead of going to, I don't know, someone who's got a master's degree in strength, in strength and conditioning, who coaches world-level athletes, or coaches at least semi-pro athletes, or college scholarship athletes, or someone, someone who actually knows what they're doing, that you would pay someone because they're a YouTuber to coach you, you don't have any sense anyways. You don't have any sense. I'm sorry, but that is just sheer stupidity that anyone would hire a YouTuber as their coach. And I'm not trying to insult my fans, the people who enjoy my work, because a lot of you guys ask me to coach you, but what do I say every time? I'm like, guys, I don't, I don't do online coaching. I'm not interested in it. You know what? It's not my bag. I could probably do Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I thought I would answer some of the questions I'm getting up front. I just earlier today announced, after thinking about this for months, I've actually put a lot of thought into this. It's something I've been planning for a while, um, of offering online coaching, because people have been requesting me to do this for a very, very long time. And so what I've actually been doing is spending several months observing multiple friends of mine who do online coaching, watching how they do it. Uh, getting advice for the way that they deal with their clients as far as doing this. This is Copper Top 22. I was on a popular military, and a Stolen Valor article kind of drew my attention to this guy named Jason Blaha. I watched his video, and he looked real familiar, but I just really couldn't put my finger on it. I couldn't place him. So I started doing a little bit of digging, and uh, after watching one of his YouTube videos where he's holding an AR-10, with a big shitty grin on his face, I realized exactly who it was, because he was always so fond of the 308. That dog boy Hemingway. I hadn't seen that guy in 16 years or so, but I remember him. We used to work together. Now, I'm pretty confused as to why people are claiming anything we did back then was honorable or had any valor. We worked for cash and prizes, equipment, and other things of considerable value. And I'm not sure what all they may be claiming, but, uh, well, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Back up to the late 90s, when I was contracting with the SAD and worked a few jobs with this kid, I'll never forget coming back from a job when out of nowhere breaking a 15-minute silence, this full Hemingway blurts out something like nothing like hunting armed men or some shit, and a few of us bust out laughing, and one guy said, Hey, man, where the fuck did that come from? And this kid answered, that's an Ernest Hemingway quote. And we all just laughed the whole way back. So after that, Hemingway was his new call sign. You could tell it kind of bugged him. He wasn't a big fan of it because we were kind of poking at him for being a dork. But, you know, we were sitting there with M4s and ARs, so it wasn't much he could do about it. Anyway, I'm not going to say he wasn't good at what he did. He was a really good shot if you ask me. Kind of hard to work with, though, because he was an arrogant son of a bitch. Like to do things his own way, no matter what the plan was, he'd just make decisions on the fly. We'd have to adjust. That was really his downfall, and probably why he got fired after a failed job down south. We knew he went on a solo job, and I was there when he missed his extraction. Three days later, he popped back up on the grid, arrested by the federal authorities of that country. I was on the team that had to go extract his ass, and we broke him out of custody. He was kind of a broken guy. Uh, wasn't really the same after that, and I don't think he really had it in him anymore. Apparently he was pursued on foot, chased by dogs, survived several engagements by himself, stole a truck, and ran out of ammo when he was apprehended with a suppressed G3, and, uh, I think it was an HK-45 that was also suppressed, so we kind of knew that that was our guy. So we went and got him, and I never really saw him after that, but that's that guy, and, uh, I don't really understand this stolen Valor bit. I don't, I don't think he ever claimed to be military. We were contractors. Or, uh, what are the kids saying? Uh, operators, as I like to 
some of y'all's articles like to say. So I'm really confused about the stolen Valor bid. I don't believe I've ever heard him claim to be military or ex-military or associated with any armed forces of any kind. But I do know that I've seen him work, and he's not really somebody I'd want on my bad side. I damn sure don't want to be downrange from him if he's got a 308 in his hand. Uh, what I do see is when he calls the Clinton administration the most corrupt administration he's ever seen, it's really strange to see all these veteran groups kind of going after him when here we got Hillary running for office. Do we think it's going to be any different? I don't know. I just think it's strange. It's, it's a false claim of stolen valor, and we have to be careful about that. Anyway, this is Copper Top 22. Hope I helped.